Hi and welcome to the Knitting Hobbit podcast. My name is Ruth. Um, I am a knitter based in the Netherlands and this is the little space where I share what I've been up to. Um, which has been a lot for the last two weeks. Um, so last week I was unable to film but this week I'm back and uh, I'm really excited to get talking about all of my knitting. Um, because uh, like I've previously mentioned I have a wee bit of health issues at the moment um, so I'm only working half day so I'm working a lot less than I used to which means I have a lot of knitting time um, some afternoons I'm not even knitting because I don't have the energy but um, on most days like on good days I do so on those days I do get quite a lot done um, and I um, am now going more towards very simple and easy projects um, just because I don't have the brain space at the moment for complicated ones or some like color work like I have a coastal coftal on the needles you're not gonna see that today because I've not had the brain space to think about the big cell burrows chart and knit that up without any mistakes um, so hopefully um, when I'm hoping that when the Christmas holidays are here, which is going to be two weeks off from work, um, I'm going to finally be able to have the brain space and get into that because I do really love that project. But um, I just wanted to mention it. Um, you're go not going to see that. You're going to see a bit more easygoing projects. Um, and I have quite a lot finished because I have gone um big on accessory knitting because i realized that i don't really have that m many accessories and it's uh starting to get proper winter over here in the netherlands like yesterday it was only four degrees during the day and i'm a person that is always cold so when it's only four degrees i need to be snuggled up completely um in all of my knits um so yeah let's start with what i'm wearing today this is my I have to look at my screen because I keep forgetting the name. Luminen Jumper uh, by Sari Nordland. Um, her original, like her sample is very oversized and very big. And I personally didn't really like the fit of that. Um, it just looks super chunky. And um, in my opinion, that just doesn't do anything for my body shape or I feel like a lot of people's body shape um, because it's already such a chunky yarn so it's not like really nice and drapey because I think really oversized jumpers can be really lovely when they're drapey like a ranunculus um, but this just was not that so I decided to knit the smallest size and uh, my gauge is also smaller so <laughs> um, yeah, I am not that tiny, like my bust circumference for reference is about 90 centimeters. Um, so I'm usually around a small, sometimes it's medium, sometimes it's an extra small. So somewhere in that area uh, also depends on the positive ease I'm wanting. Um, so yeah, this one is now, I still have some positive ease as you can see, like quite some space left but it's now hugging my body and um, I have actual like shape and I can it's a bit more loose um, and I can tuck it into my jeans and it looks really cute so I'm really happy with this um, I knit it in oh what was it what was it called again wool addicts by long yarns um, in their hope base and the color is light gray um and i still have some left over so i'm thinking i might make myself a chunky hat or something like that um yeah i really enjoyed knitting this it knits up really quickly because you knit it on quite a large large needle um i think let me have a look yes the pattern so you use an eight millimeter needle for the collar and then um for the main body you use a 10 millimeter needle so it knits up crazy quickly um, and it was really fun the lace panel is really nice and enjoy enjoyable to knit um, it's quite easy um, 
And yeah, the raglan is just, it's just a basic raglan shaping. And uh, as you can see, there's not that many rows in the raglan, so it's done, it's done super quick. <laughs> um, and it's really, really nice and warm and soft. I do sometimes find it a bit itchy up here and sometimes around my arms a bit as well. Um, even though I'm usually fine wearing like the most rustic wools, like a Lafo Slopey. Um, but the yarns that tend to have like a little bit of a softer itch, um, I get really annoyed by. This is still fine, but sometimes at the end of the day, I'm like it needs to go off. Um, so yeah, that's just on the yarn. Um, also the yarn, I haven't worn it that much, but it's already pilling quite a lot. I think you can see that if I pull it up against oh, my face, you can see it. Um, and I just don't, don't think it's the best quality for a um, chunky yarn. Um, it's just single ply as well, so that might be like, that might play a big role in it. Um, but yeah, that's just my opinion, like pitting at the arm quite a lot. So yeah, that's what I'm wearing today. Um, then let's get on to my finished objects. So the first thing I finished, I finally knit the second, the second mitt. So um, if you've watched my previous episodes, you know that I... Um, knit the school run mittens and I knit the smallest adult size first in like a light beige color um, and they didn't fit they were so big on me I do have really small hands I have to say so um, I think I'm on gauge but I might just be a little bit on the big side as well so that might play a part in it as well I haven't really measured um, so I made the child size I am the kind of person that always needs to buy gloves like size extra small or extra extra small and I can get them from the kids section so um, it's not like that weird that I have to get the kids size. Um, so I finally finished the second one and I absolutely love the fit of them. I wore them yesterday and my hands were really nice and toasty. Um, it's just when I was cycling that my fingers were getting really cold because they get all the wind when you're um, on the bike and you're holding your steer like your steering it's not a wheel the thing you steer with on your bike um, so yeah I really enjoy them they're a really fun knit they're really quick um, and uh, I think you can easily pair I don't know but you can easily knit one in a day maybe a pair if you're a quick knitter I can't really remember how fast I knit them but definitely in a weekend you'll have the whole pair done um, I just didn't really get onto it uh, onto the second one for a while so it took me a minute um, but yeah this is how they look the picots are really fun to do and I think I am also gonna do this um, as a sock cuff someday um, so yeah happy with those then on to the topic of mittens um at the very very beginning of this year i think it was let me look on ravelry because i do tend to put in the dates um yeah it was in january i knit the heat remits by fiber tails um but i knit them in this uh alpaca yarn that is really itchy for me uh like i just mentioned a really soft itch um it's just what gets me absolutely crazy um so i found out that alpaca is not really my thing um but i knit them in that and i barely wore them because it was so itchy and mainly at my wrists i, I if i remember correctly uh just super itchy for me um so I decided to pass them on when I also passed on the jumper. I knit in the same yarn uh, to Heather and Hops when we did the jumper swap. Um, I didn't even tell her, I just gave them to her. I'm like, she'll love them. And if not, she can pass them on to someone else. Um, so I finally re-knit them and I'm really, really happy with it. I still have to weave in the ends of one. Uh, <laughs> I've just done one. So this one is fully done and looks really nice. Um, so why I love these mitts so much? 
I always love fingerless mittens because I, I just feel useless when all my fingers are covered. I, I'm just... I'm just so useless. I cannot do anything with normal mittens on. So I'm always wearing fingerless ones in the winter. Um, and these are really lovely because, uh, like I just said, when you're cycling, your fingers do still get cold. But with this one, you can just flip up the, um, the ribbing and your fingers will be nice and toasty. I would have liked them to be a little bit longer, but... Um, my yarn ran out. I was playing a little bit of yarn chicken. Um, so they're just a little bit shorter, but it's not too bad. This will be absolutely fine. And if my fingers are really cold, I can still like pull on it a little bit and it will ride up a bit, but then they're completely covered. So this one I'm fine knitting the smallest size. Um, it's knit, so you do the cables which are really simple by the way, like this was simple enough for me to do. And then these braids, which are also in the Gros Shawl uh, by Fiber Tails, they're so much fun to do because you just knit them as stockinettes and then you drop it down and you pick it back up again. And I really, really enjoy it. And I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and then around, it's just garter stitch. So it's nice and squishy and warm and then your thumb gusset is in stockinette. Um, and they're quite long as well so that um, I don't have the issue of um, like coat sleeves um, riding up because I have really short arms as well. Uh, so I always knit my sleeves shorter and everything and store about anything with long sleeves. It's always too long for me. Um, so I don't have that issue, but I think if you do have long arms and your coat sleeve does tend to ride up, then this is really nice because as you can see, they are quite long. Um, and it will still be lovely because it keeps you extra warm, of course, if you don't have the issue like me. Um, so yeah, and then I of course had to complete the set and I also knit the headband. What I knit this in, by the way, um, I have all my project pages up on Ravelry, which I always link down below. So if you want to see any details of the yarns I used, um, just check my Ravelry page because sometimes I can't remember a colorway or something, but it will always be um, in the projects page there. So have a look over there if you want to. Um, so I knit them in um, Rowan Cotton Cashmere is the main color. Um, it's what I knit my ooh, spring sorrel in. And then to make it um, really warm and nice and cozy, I held it together with um, some leftovers. La Bienna May Mohair Silk in the colorway Sienna, which is by the Grocery Girls. Um, on this one I held the mohair single and on the headband I held the mohair double so the headband is extra fluffy and warm and lovely. So here's a close up. Um, I hope you can kind of see the difference between held single over here and held double over here. Um, but I think the colors go together really nice and the mohair gives this, this really lovely light glow as well. Um, I did have to make it quite a bit larger because everything on me Oh, I have to do this in a way I don't ruin my braids. <laughs> like that. Um, so it fits like this and oh, I just love it. Um, so I had to knit this quite a bit larger because my whole body is quite small, like small hands, short arms, but I have a really big head. I always make the size large for hats and everything like that. And um, this pattern is just written as a one size. Um, but of course, uh, because the repeats are quite small, it's really easy to shorten or lengthen it. Um, and I had to add quite a bunch of repeats. I think in the pattern she has, if I remember correctly, it's like 24. And I need 30 to 32 repeats, somewhere around there. I would have to recount them. Um, but now it fits perfect. 
like it's still snug on my head um, but it's not like tight um, and I just I really really love this um, I've never worn headbands before but I think that this will uh, definitely go places with me um, especially as a set because it's just I am a sucker for sets so I do think that this is really really nice I'm just gonna pause for a second so that is my wintry mitten and headband accessories for um, today that I finished. But that's not all of my finished objects. <laughs> so if you've been following me for a while, you know that I have a pair of socks on the needles that I have had on the needles for forever. And <laughs> I finally finished them. Um, so now that it's getting colder, I'm just wearing my knitted socks every single day. Um, so I decided I would need to get going on these so that I can actually use them and wear them. Um, I knit them using my sock recipe, which is also on a project page on Ravelry. I'll link it down below. Um, basically, the I think the fun thing about the socks, uh, the sock recipe that I use is it's a mash together of multiple different patterns. So I couldn't just link one pattern and be like, here you go. This is how I knit my socks. Um, but I do have an explanation of kind of what I do um, on in the project notes on Ravelry. Um, the project is called My Sock Recipe. So um, if you've knit socks before and you kind of know what you're doing, you'll be able to use it as um, maybe some improvements to your own socks for the fit because I do really enjoy this. I always used to knit my socks using a flegal heel. Um, but I, I just think that this um, fits so much better. It really hugs my foot and it like hugs my heel really nicely. So what I do is I always knit my socks toe up. And then every once in a while along the foot, I'll do a little short row. Uh, so just once going back and forth. And then I'll knit for about, I think I do about two centimeters. And then after two centimeters, I knit another little short row. Um, this lengthen, lengthens the bottom of your foot, um, which really, really helps against it on the top of your foot, like going like this. It does a bit now on the sock blocker, but when I'm actually wearing them, um, it sits really, really nicely. Um, so then instead of doing my gusset increases over here, where you usually do them, because I do them on magic loop, so you would do them on either end of um, your row on the back side. I do them in the middle. So I hope you can see this. Yeah, you can. So my increases are over here. Um, which also is just something I found that really hugs that, like that shape of your heel. Um, because of course your heel is like quite a bit rounder than the rest of your foot. And I think this just works really nicely. And then um, I use, this is a technically a heel flap and gusset, but um, since it's toe up, you don't have to just knit a heel flap um, and then pick up the stitches for the gusset. You um, do it all at the same time. So as you're knitting the heel flap, you're picking up stitches on both sides, uh, like knitting them together. And it creates the same look as a heel flap and gusset, but it's just so much easier. It's so nice. And um, I really think that this is a really, really nice fit. And then here as well, it just hugs your foot um, like just above your heel, it really hugs it. So I don't feel like they slide down a lot, uh, which has been an issue issue for me with the flegal heel. Um, yeah, and then I knit my socks usually quite short like these. So um, I wear a lot of boots, like I have the um, Hoagie and Co boots. I think they're called Adventure boots. I adore them. They're the most comfortable boots. So if you're if you've been wondering about getting them, I do recommend them. I feel like they're more comfortable than my Doc Martens. Um, and they're a bit shorter than Doc Martens as well. So um, I found out that about this is the perfect length for those boots. Um, they go up right to the brim of the boots, but they don't stick out. Um, but um, yeah, 
they're just perfect and it's so comfortable to wear those boots with knitted socks and it's just really lovely and nice and that will be my outfit for the whole winter so as i knit them two at a time they're also finished at the same time um so that's enough rambling about socks then i have one more finished object i know it's a lot um i told you it was a lot um so this one um was just so i've been really wanting to get a cat <laughs> But um, if you live in the Netherlands, you know that the housing market is absolutely insanity right now, which is why I still live with my parents. Um, and my parents don't want a cat, but I do. So <laughs> I decided to make my own. <laughs> um, so this pattern is, let me look it up on my computer. The Nursery Cat by Sarah Elizabeth Kellner. I think the pattern is just like two euros or something. But she does have a whole bunch of free cat patterns as well. So I do definitely recommend looking into those. I am planning on making uh, the big... I think it's called the Parlor Cat. It's just a cat that like lays down. Um, I think I want to make that one as well. I will have to see if I have enough yarn left over of this. Um, so I knit this little kitty using um, a yarn that I've never heard of. I got it as a birthday present, which was last August. Um, it's alpaca. And as I told you before, um, early in this episode, I cannot take the soft itch of alpaca. And if I feel this as well, this has the exact same soft itch. So I couldn't make anything wearable out of it. Um, and I think this... Sorry. I don't know what that was. So these little kitty cats are absolutely perfect. So I had two balls. So I have one of this color, um, which is what I use for this little kitty cat. And then I have this one as well, which ha which has a moral effect. Um, but it's the same brand. So it's Austerman Inca Alpaca Wool. Um, so it's a worship weight yarn which is what this pattern calls for but um, i also think the enjoyable thing for these is that you can knit them in pretty much any yarn at any gauge it will just change the size of your kids kitty cat so but um because i accidentally knit them on a too small needle as well like it's supposed to be a little bit bigger um but i think i knit it either i knit it one size small i can't remember if it was three or three and a half um so this is 50 grams and it has a hundred meters um and uh i think i'll somehow mush these two together to make the parlor cat because that one looks adorable it's more like a life-sized cat and it just lays down and it looks so snugly and it it was a lot of fun to knit um I feel like these kind of things always intimidated me, but it is actually super easy. You start at the neck and you knit down. Um, there's some short rows over here to make the curve in the back. Um, and there's just, the, the rest is just increases and decreases. So you knit all the way down, then you close it at the bottom, then you knit the tail, and then you pick up the stitches around here, you knit the hat, the head. And then um, the only thing you have to really sew on is that you have to knit the paws separately and then sew them on over here. And I'm not the best sewer, so it doesn't look super neat, but I am quite proud of myself for this. Um, and it can sit, let me see, yeah, as you can see, it can sit on its own. So I just have it in my little windowsill and I think it's adorable. Um, it will still get a face. I um, personally don't like the look of embroidered on eyes. Uh, so I ordered some just little, like the little black eyes that you're supposed to just be able to screw in. Um, so I ordered those. And then when I have them, I will put them on and then I'll do the rest of the face because I feel like I need the eyes on first to see where the rest is gonna go. Um, so it's faceless at the moment, but it will get a face. I'll put that back where it was. Um, 
So those were all of my finished objects. It was a lot this week and we're not done yet um, because I have quite a couple whips to share as well. Just a little drink break. So the first whip I have to share is in this bag. Um, it's made by the Happy Kiwi Shop or the Happy Kiwi Stitch Markers. Um, she made it especially for me, which is really lovely. I asked her if she had a large Harry Potter bag and she made this for me. Um, so I'm really, really grateful. Thank you so much, Kylie, if you're watching. Um, so in here I have my wool and honey. Um, for the last week I haven't done much on it, but the week before I did do some stuff. Um, so let me just get this organized. Um, I can't remember where I was last time I showed, but in case I hadn't split for the sleeves yet, I've split for the sleeves. <laughs> I've knit a bit on the body, as you can see over here. And then I just wanted some mindless knitting. So I picked up the sleeves but did not join it in the round. Um, I asked for a lot of opinions uh, last time and I got so many, um, but uh, I saw I didn't get around to replying to everybody because I didn't have the brain space to think of <laughs> what to say. Um, but I did reply to some of you and a lot of you seem to think that it's that this jumper is knitting reverse tokenette, but it's not. <laughs> it is garter stitch. Um, so I hope you can see if I hold it up close and stretch it out a bit, like you can see it's garter stitch and not reverse tokenette. Um, because yes, if it was reverse tokenette, I can just turn it inside out and just knit, knit, knit. Um, like I did with the spring sorrel, but it's not, it's garter stitch. Um, so what I did... I'm fine knitting the body like one round knit, one round purl, that's fine for me, but I just wanted a bit of a break from it. So I picked up the, um, sorry, I'm so all over the place, I feel like, excuse that. Um, so I picked up the sleeve and did not join it in a round so that I, I can knit it flat. And then when I'm done with the garter stitch, I can just um, seam it up at the underarm and then that way I can just knit back and forth just knit not having to think about anything and um, it's actually quite nice uh, especially now that I've uh, gotten a bit of stuff done I can actually hold it flat um, in the beginning when I was still like down here I had to magic loop it because you don't have the space to hold it like this but now I do and it just com completely fits on my needle and I think it will just be nicer going as um, I get on so yeah that is where my wool and honey is at um, yeah I have not knit much on it last week because I was knitting on all the accessories but I think I will do some more work on it um, but I'm, I'm just gonna Take it slow. I have so many whips. I'm just gonna pick what I want to knit on and knit on that um, because they're all just a bit different. And um, yeah, sometimes um, one project can be a bit too much for my brain, while another is not. Even though they may they may be very similar or um, just as easy to knit on, but that's just the space I'm in now. So this is knit in Quince and Co. Uh, Finch, which is their fingering weight, 100% wool, and it's in the color apricots, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, that's my wool and honey. Um, I don't think I have much more to say about it. I'm really happy with it. I love the color, and um, this will just slowly keep on growing. Time to stuff this in my bag, back in its home. <laughs> so next up I have another jumper and it is the jumper for my brother's birthday. And like I've previously mentioned, he does sometimes read the comments. So please don't say the jumper for your brother, just say the single malt because it is the single malt by Maxim Sear. Um, 
And I also, I think last time I was still working um, like on the raglan. If I remember correctly, I'm not completely sure. But as you can see, I've split for the sleeves. Um, so the sleeves are on little stitch holders right now. And I'm just slowly working on the body. This is how much I've got done. Um, I made my dad try it on for me. Um, because it fits me. But it's really stretchy. So I was doubting if it was the right size. <laughs> if I was going correctly. Um, because it just like... When I put it on, it just like hugs me uh, because it just snuggles in, kind of. And then when my dad puts it on, it stretches it out, stretches out super easily. So he fits, it fits him. Um, and my dad and my brother are the same size. My brother is just has like a little bit longer arms and a longer body, but with wise they're pretty much the same. So now that I know if it's my dad, I am more confident about this fitting my brother as well. Um, I am knitting this in Concept by Katia Lagom and it's this gorgeous grey which has a little bit of blue accents in it and I really really enjoy it. I think it's really pretty and um, it's quite soft as well. It's a cotton and wool mix um, and yeah I'm enjoying this. Also this one I'm just slow going. We'll see when it gets done. My brother's birthday is in February so we're not rushing. Uh, just enjoying this knit. And then my very, very last whip is in here. Um, this looks like a fancy project bag, but it's just a bag that I got with a really cheap handbag. Um, and I never used it until I realized it would be a really nice project bag. So that's what it is now. It has a hard bottom, so it, it's it's just really nice and otherwise it's quite flexible. Um, so this project is a bit of a... I am going to frog it. Um, it has... I cast this on last February, so it's been a while. And then after not too long, um, I put it in hibernation. Um, and then I didn't knit on it at all anymore. I actually put up a poll on Instagram to see if people thought I should frog it. I will have a quick look on my phone and see what people responded. I've already decided, but just to see. Uh, so 20 people said frog it and 12 people said don't frog it. Um, I am gonna frog it. So if you voted on the poll on Instagram, um, I'm sorry, I'm not really listening to you guys. I'm working it. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is the, um, I'm gonna m mispronounce this probably, but it's the Hilde Bear Shawl by Fiber Tails. Um, I've kept it on the needles to show you, but um, this will be frogged. So this is what I got. And I think the shawl is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and it's not like the pattern's fault at all. I just feel like for me, I made the wrong, I'll keep it in front of the back. I feel like for me, I made the wrong yarn choice. Um, I like my shawls to be super, super warm and uh, toasty. And this is a super wash merino and I just don't think it's as warm as I would want it to be. Um, I think maybe in the future I'll make it in holes super soft and then like help double. So it's going to be nice and wooly and warm. I, I love my shawls to be wooly and warm. Um, and I'm also afraid that the cables aren't going to show up to quite their potential uh, because it, it has an applied cable border. And um, I just think it will be so much prettier in like a solid or a, um, what's it called? Semi-solid? <laughs> Tonal. That was the word I was looking for. But I think I'll probably uh, make this, like I just said, in um, a really wooly solid yarn. And I think I will just love it a lot more, which is why I'm going to frock this. Um, also, because it's been in hibernation for so long, I just don't think it's worth, like, yeah, 
I just don't love it as much as I want to. The pattern is absolutely gorgeous and someday I will make it and finish it. So um, this yarn, by the way, so I got it a while ago, so I don't think she sells it anymore. I will have a quick look what's it, what it's called. Oh yeah, so it's by Bad Katu Yarn, um, which is a indie dyer here in the Netherlands. And the colorway is called Lady Grey. Um, but because I bought it the very beginning of this year, I, um, I honestly can't tell you she still sells it. Um, but it is gorgeous because it's this tonal grey with the bright pink speckles. And some speckles are a lot brighter than others and some are a bit more purpley. But in general, they're pink speckles. And I do really, really love this yarn. So my new plan... I've already made a little start this morning. Um, it's another jumper. Um, I think it would be really nice to have this yarn in just a very plain and basic jumper. Um, and it will be so nice to have like a really thin uh, fingering weight jumper, I think. Um, because it, when it's really cold, I can layer it with a really, wa a really warm cardigan. And when it's warmer, I can still wear it because it's quite thin and it's still wool. So it's, you know, I, I just think it will be lovely. So I made a little start on the ribbing. Not that much to show. Um, but this is going to be a... Whoa, what's that pattern called? A cozy, classic... Yeah, a cozy classic light from Jesse Mead or Maid, I don't know. Um, which is just a very basic raglan jumper. It's just plain stockinette. And um, I think it's also kind of just what my brain needs at the moment. Um, and I think it will be really nice. So, yeah. Um, I just got distracted because I heard a noise, but I think it's my neighbor and not here in the house. <laughs> so I placed out for a second. Um, and I, th I yeah, I think it will be really lovely. And then the speckles can really like shine and show and be really nice. Um, so yeah, I also still have my shawlography on the needles. I'm a bit in the same space as, oh, I think it was Laura from Penrose Knits. Um, that we just need to get it done. Uh, kind of lost motivation as we're working on the stripes and just not really feeling like being in the mood to pick it up and keep going on it um and i am in that exact same space so i just need to get it done but it's honestly i don't i don't think it's gonna happen maybe someday also maybe during the christmas holidays because i'm probably gonna be quite a bit bored um because we're pretty much going back into lockdown over here in the Netherlands so having a lot to knit on is definitely going to be a good thing <laughs> um, yeah that was it for today it was quite a lot but I don't think I um, I rambled a lot at the beginning but I think I kind of got the groove later on and didn't ramble too much um, I really hope you enjoyed this episode um, please uh, do like and subscribe it because it does help um, and yeah but if you don't li didn't like it then don't like um, it will be really nice to hear what everyone's been working on while you're listening to me ramble on about knitting um, or if you have anything else to share or to say or to ask um, definitely leave a comment i will do my best to reply um but i definitely read them if i give a little heart thing then you know i've read it um but like i said a lot of this episode i feel like i'm not always in the right space um in my mind to um think up a reply um sometimes so sometimes they do come later like sometimes i do go back to the comments and reply to a couple when i feel like it but um yeah, that's about it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.